It's good to be here tonight. It's uh, about time for our class to begin. We're glad that you made the decision to come out and study God's Word together tonight as uh, part of our summer series. We've been blessed with a lot of really good speakers uh, all summer, and tonight is, is no exception. Patrick Johnson from Peyton Road Church of Christ is, is with us tonight. Uh, Adam is in Winchester, Tennessee, doing the, doing the summer series there, I think. And so uh, it, it's preacher rotation in summer. And so I'm I, by default, uh, but it's a good default that I, I get to introduce my friend uh, Patrick Johnson to you. And I don't think he's a stranger to many of us here. Uh, I, Brother Johnson has been invited back uh, just about every summer since he came the first time, one of our regular summer speakers, and uh, I always hear good things about, about his message when he comes. Uh, Patrick and I go back a long way to uh, the mid-1990s together when we first met, right after Brother Johnson had just moved to Lebanon, and I was, I was working in Nashville, and uh, Patrick and his brother introduced themselves to me, and we became good friends at, at that point, and have been been good friends ever since. We've uh, we had the privilege to worship with the Peyton Road Church for a little over a year. Uh, just a very good experience in our lives. Uh, I, I admire uh, Brother Johnson because he's, he's one of those bivocational preachers. And uh, that means he's got a full-time job working for, the, working for the city. And he's a part-time preacher, but he works like he's a full-time preacher. And uh, that, that, that's what good bivocational preachers do. And, uh, and Brother Johnson is one of those guys. And I, I have always admired him. Uh, he, he doesn't just mail in his messages. I know he's a student of the Word, a graduate of Freed Hardeman. Uh, he puts the time in to deliver the messages that he presents. And the people who get to hear him are blessed uh, by his presentation and by, by God's Word. I'm going to ask the guys in the booth if you can. Uh, don't have PowerPoint, but he's going to mention three or four scriptures. And if you can get to them in time to get them up, great. Uh, if you miss one or two, that's okay. But just keep up best you can. And um, I think, uh, well, got some friends from Peyton Road with us here tonight, along with uh, Patrick's wife, Denise. They have a son, Patrick Jr., uh, still in Fisk. Transferred to MTSU, so he's, he's a college fellow, and um, they're, they're just a good family, and it's a good church. Uh, Patrick's uh, topic tonight is when the world makes your faith feel foolish. So, Brother Johnson, bless us with your word tonight. Okay. Wow, thank you so much, Brother Tigner. How is everyone tonight? <laughs> wonderful, wonderful. It is certainly a joy to be able to be with you back at this great church. Uh, thank you so much for the invitation. I want to thank uh, your preacher, Adam, and also uh, the elders of this church, and all of you who have been so kind over the years uh, to say nice things to me. My neighbor, uh, Paul Stovall, uh, he says he, he knows where to find me. We're just around the corner. But I want to just say thank you so much to this great church for your love, your, your hospitality, and the invitation for me to come back um, uh, and to speak with you. Uh, it's always a joy uh, to come and to be with you. To the Peyton Road Church, those who are members who are able to come tonight, we're glad to see you. And uh, if you're visiting with us, we want you to know you are honored guests. I'm speaking on behalf of the Churches of Christ. Thank you for being here. We pray if you have any questions that you would be more than happy uh, that you would contact us or uh, speak to us if you have any questions, and we'd be more than happy to try to give you a Bible answer. Tonight, um, the topic that uh, Adam gave, and you all, I'm sure, have had some great, great uh, preaching and, and uh, speaking uh, this summer series, and I hope that I can add value uh, to uh, those speakers who have come uh, before me. But tonight, um, he gave me a, a topic. Your theme for the whole year, I'm told, is remaining rooted. And that's a great topic, remaining rooted. But the topic that he gave to me was when the world makes your faith look foolish. When the world makes your faith look 
foolish. Now tonight, what I want to do, and I was going to ask the question, uh, have your, have you ever had a, an episode or a time that your faith ever looked foolish? Have you ever experienced uh, a moment when your faith looked foolish when it's compared to or with the world? And since I'm a Bible, I believe in, I believe in, I believe the topic is a great topic, but it ought to be rooted in Scripture. Tonight, what I want to do is we're going to look at some Scripture, amen, and to see uh, uh, what, what, what can we do when our faith looks foolish um, when it comes to the world. And the scripture I want to go to quickly is, and what we're going to do tonight is just simply Bible class. Is that all right? Bible. So either you have your Bible, or hope you got your Bible app. That's what the young, young folk do. And we're going to go to about three or four scriptures, and we're going to just share some things with you. And I hope that this will be a blessing. So when the world makes your faith look foolish. I want to go to 1 Corinthians chapter number 2. 1 Corinthians, I'm looking at my time. So 1 Corinthians chapter 2, and I'm going to look at verses number 14. Um, verses 14, yeah. Um, and 15, Second, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, Paul's letter to the Corinthians. It reads like this, but the natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him. Nor can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. But he who is spiritual judges all things. Yet he himself is rightly judged by no one. I'll stop right there. Uh, when the world makes your faith look foolish. When I begin to look at this topic... Uh, I thought, first of all, I need to define some of these words. When the world makes your faith look foolish. The word faith in the Greek, pistos, is conviction. When your conviction, when your, when your faith, when your belief, uh, that's what faith is. Faith is belief, it's conviction, it is um, a, a determination about something. We're going to come back and look at that, but just keep that in mind. Your faith, when, when your faith looks foolish, the word foolish in the Greek is the word moros, M-O-R-O-S, uh, and that word moros, when you are faith, it, it, it's it's the English word moron, or it's the word moronic. You've heard people say, well, he's a moron. She's a moron. I hope nobody's called you that. But uh, it, it's, it's the Greek word moros where you get moron. And uh, moron means one who is um, uh, lacking good sense or judgment. Somebody who's unwise. Uh, uh, someone who is what we would consider dumb or stupid or idiotic or unintelligent, brainless, silly, and we got a whole lot of other words that you could probably use to go with that. But that's where that word comes from, uh, moron. It, it actually goes a little deeper, and the word actually talks about someone who is dull or mentally inert. It, 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 it's rooted uh, or it's, it, it, it comes from a word that really talks about uh, physical nerves causing one to become dull. Their, their nervous system, their nerves are not sharp. And they would say they are uh, moronic or they are moros. So that's the idea is foolishness. And, and I think that's important that we get that. So, so, so when, when one's faith, their confidence, their belief, looks moronic in the sight of the world. And uh, do I need to, I hope I don't have to, to preach too hard tonight to let you know that when you compare, and when you compare the world with uh, a believer, uh, we're not on the same level. We're not on the same level. 
I know you think we are, but we're not. We're not on the same. We, we think differently. We, 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 we process some, uh, we should think differently. And tonight, I hope when we look at some of these scriptures, you'll see that. And, and Paul uh, talks about in the Corinthian letter, in 1 Corinthians, he really talked about the word wisdom. You see the word throughout that chapter, chapter 1 and chapter 2, wisdom, which the Greeks really believed that they were the intelligentsia. But wisdom, they thought they had special knowledge. And, and Paul has to write to the church to tell them that, that, that the wisdom of the world is foolishness with God. It's foolishness with God. And so he, he says, the natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God. Uh, if you were, 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 were taking notes, I would tell you to look at, uh, underline the word natural man. The natural man. That's the ungenerated man. That's the unbeliever. That's the that's the Adamic man. That's the sinful man. That's the man we all who are not who are now saved. That's who we used to be. That's the natural man. And then he says, uh, not only is there a natural man, then he talks about the spiritual man. The natural man, the natural man, he says, does not receive the things of the Spirit of God. Why? For they are, here's that word, foolishness. They are foolishness to him. They are foolishness. The natural man does not understand, comprehend the things of God. And, and, and we're on two different levels, amen. Uh, he says, uh, nor can he know them. That's what the Bible says. That's not Patrick Johnson. Nor can he know them. Why? Because it says it because they are spiritually discerned. They, they cannot process. They cannot understand. They cannot thoroughly rightly divide because they are the natural man. The natural man. And you need to understand that, 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 that there's the natural man and there is the spiritual man. And that's why we sometimes think differently. Now, you, you, you're looking at me strange. What do you mean think differently? You know, are we aliens? Or this? No, no, I'm, I'm going to try to help you to understand what I mean by we can't. We think differently. And that's why they think differently of us. And that's the reason why the world sometimes uh, look at us and think we are foolish because we operate on a different plane. Can I get an amen in here? Y'all looking at me like, huh? We operate on a different plane. Now, let me see if I can give you to understand that, all right? All right, now, 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 uh, all of us, listen, all of us have uh, five senses. Is that right? Most of us have five. Yeah, God gives us five senses. Five, five, five. What are they? Um, uh, hearing, uh, smelling, help me out. What's some other? Sight. Taste? Touch, yeah, five. Most of us have five senses. Five, five. And, and, and that's how we process information. That's how we process information. What we see, what we, what we hear, um, uh, touch. We, we're understanding, we understand and we process information based on those five Senses, five senses. That's how we perceive information in life is through those five senses. Hearing, seeing, touch, taste, smell. Yeah. And most all of us have been given that from birth, right? Yeah. That's how we take in information. I understand who you are based on what I see. I take in information based on what I hear. Am I right about it? Yeah. Uh, women, women, women listen more than men do. Yeah, women, women listen to everything we say. And now that they listen, they remember everything we say. Amen. Men, on the other hand, we don't always listen well, but Brother Tickner, we see well. We are visual. And that's how we process information. And then sometimes if I want to know more about someone, uh, it's good to hear, it's good to see, but when I touch them, I get a better understanding sometimes. And if I smell them, what, what, what are you getting at? We process information through those five senses. That's the natural man. 
That's how the natural man does it. But may I suggest to you tonight that a child of God, a Christian, has a sixth sense. He has more than five. Y'all look at me and say, huh? I'm going to show you tonight that we have a sixth sense of how we perceive life and process life. What do you mean? Okay, what's that sixth sense? Uh, the sixth sense and the operative word in this topic when the world makes your faith look foolish. The sixth sense that a child of God has is his or her faith. Yeah, your faith, your belief, your conviction, your faith. Well, what does the scripture say about that? All right, let's see what the scripture does say about that. Um, look what it says. It says, um, when you're talking about that six, six, uh, Second Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 7. Y'all know this one. I don't need to Second Corinthians 5 and verse 7. For we walk by, he's talking to the Christian now, we walk by I'm glad. So we walk by faith and not by that's the sixth sense. We, we, we have faith. You know, we out there, everybody has faith. But I'm talking about spiritual faith. Spiritual conviction. Spiritual trust. Amen. Dependency upon God. We walk by faith. Not only do we walk by faith. Romans 1 verse 17. The just shall live by faith. That's how we live. We, we live. We don't live just based on the things we see. We live by the faith of God. Amen. Why? Why do we do that? Because, because a child of God has that sixth sense and that sixth sense is faith. Yeah. And that's the reason why we don't, we don't have an anxiety attack like everybody else. Because even though trouble may come, we know Job said, man born of a woman, Job 14.1, man born of a woman is full of trouble. We understand, listen, trouble is going to come. Oh, yes, it will. I don't care who you are, black, white, red, level, whatever. You can be educated, uneducated. You can live in Lebanon, Nashville, New York. If you're a child of God, trouble is going to come. And even if you're not a child of God, trouble is going to come. You don't have to be a Christian to have trouble. You can be, a, you can be an atheist and still have trouble. Because the Bible says, man, any man born of a woman is in a few days full of trouble. So you know trouble's coming. That's something I know about everyone who's in here tonight. Everyone. What is Paul's told about them told? They ain't told me anything. This is what I know. I know tonight, every one of us, or some of you tonight, just got out of some trouble. If you didn't just get out of some trouble, I know number two, you are headed for some trouble. And if you can't say amen that you just got out of some trouble or you're headed for some trouble tonight, I know you're sitting here right now in trouble. <laughs> because the Bible is right. Man, but of a woman is of a few days and full of trouble. But now, so we know trouble's coming, but how do we handle trouble? We handle trouble by faith. We know that God is on our side. And God is going to work. I guess I'm shouting a little too loud for y'all tonight. I, I get excited when I talk about God because I've had trouble in my life. And if you ever been out, of, if, if God ever got you out of something, I'm talking about something your lawyer can't get you out of. Something that your doctor can't get you out of. Something your banker can't get you out of. If you ever been, God has, has has got you out of something, has, has saved you and, and redeemed you and, 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 and got you up. You ought to get excited about God. Oh, yeah. And so we walk by that faith. I, I know that all things work together for the good. Those who love the Lord and who are called according to his purpose and to the world, they don't understand that. How can she come to work smiling? How can they keep on I mean, rejoicing, you know, because God is on your side. And God, I trust God. I believe God. But, 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 but wait a minute, I don't see God. No, I, I walk by faith. Now, what is faith? I'm glad you asked the question. 
What is faith? Matter of fact, Luke 18 and verse number 8, when God, uh, uh, here's what the Bible says, uh, uh, when the, nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth. When God comes back, you know what he's looking for? You know what he's looking for? It, it just like he's looking for people who have faith. Now, Brother Johnson, I, I got faith, I, I got, but do you have biblical faith? Biblical faith. Now, if you have faith, I, I think I've shared this before, y'all. You have, you have faith. You have faith, but it may not be biblical faith. You have faith. Uh, you, you, have faith in, uh, uh, you have faith in the Titans. That's why you go buy the jersey, buy the ticket. Y'all ain't saying that, no, okay, okay. Yeah, you have faith. The Titans, not your, your, your team, okay. You got faith in the Cowboys. Some you got, no, nothing wrong with your faith. It's just that your faith is in the wrong thing. Amen. Yeah. I, I know you have faith. Faith. What is faith? He, I'm glad you asked. Hebrews 11 and verses number 1. Now faith is the, that's what in the scripture, is the substance of things hoped for, evidence of things. You have faith? Uh, how, do you know, how, how do you know I have faith, Brother Johnson? The reason why I know you have faith is you go to, you're going to go to work tomorrow. And you're going to go to work believing that on Friday, you're going to get a check. Yeah. Because if you didn't believe that there's going to be a check deposited in your account on Friday, you wouldn't go to work tomorrow. Nothing wrong with your faith. The problem is, is what your faith is in. Nothing wrong with your faith. When I get in the car, I, I haven't, I haven't, uh, I haven't, uh, Driven with Tom, but if I get in the car with Tom, I have to have faith in Tom. I have to believe he's going to abide by the rules. I got to believe that he's going to drive like a Christian. <laughs> but I have never driven with Tom Tigger. I don't know. He, uh, 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 he may drive like a man, yet, but I, I have nothing wrong with my faith. The problem is, is our faith is in the wrong person. Faith. Hebrews 11, faith is the substance. I'm going to got some more scripture. Substance of thing hoped for. Evidence. What's the word? Substance. The word substance. It's the sub stance. It's something you can't see. It's sub. But it causes you to stand. Like a sub marine is a boat that you can't see because it's under the water. Can I get an amen? amen? A subway is a train that is under. Mm -hmm. Faith is the sub. It's something that's under. I may can't see it, but I know it's there helping me to stand. Faith in God, I believe that the reason why I can do what I can do is because God is underneath helping me to stand. And when you can't stand on your own, God is there to help you. And that's why we come to, amen, that's why we're out here tonight. If we didn't believe in God, and the Bible says, the fool that said in his heart, there's no God. That's why they don't come to church. That's why they don't believe in God. Because they, they, oh, they believe in God, they don't believe in the God. They don't believe in the everlasting God. They have a little G. But we believe that God controls and he sustains all of my life. I believe that. It's not an accident. And so the world thinks it's foolish for you and I to come out here. The world thinks it's foolish for us to act right. The, the world thinks when, 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 when we're driving down Main Street like we need to and somebody uh, thinks you cut them off, they think you ought to act crazy like they do. Amen. But what do you do? You still just drive like a Christian. And they say, he's foolish, he's crazy. No, the deal is, is you've got faith. And you live by faith. 
You walk by faith. You act by faith on God's holy word. Romans 10, y'all know this, 17. Faith cometh by hearing. Hearing by the word of God. Faith, conviction. I've got conviction. I believe. Listen, not only does Hebrews 11 say faith is the substance of things hoped for, it's the evidence of things not seen. Truth of the matter is what we call spiritual. That's the difference between physical, physical and spiritual. If it's spiritual, you can't see it. And so he says here, he says the evidence of things not seen. And he says, by it, the elders obtained a good report. Look at verse 3. By faith. Now, he talked about not faith, and, and, I, and that's what we need today in the, 20, in the 21st century. That's what we need today. We need a now faith. We need a faith that is germane to now Amen. to help us act right. Amen. To help us love right. To help us to do right. We need a now kind of faith. And if we, watch this, verse 3, by faith, and that's the operative word, by faith, look what it says, we do what? Understand. That's what it says. By faith, we what? Understand. By faith, we understand. I don't know all there is to know about you know, the world and its creation, you know, somebody says, well, you know, uh, two atoms, you know, I was in, two atoms collided and created the Big Bang Theory, and okay, all right, two, two, okay, all right, well, we'll, we'll go with that, okay? Well, who created the two atoms? <laughs> oh, Big Bang, okay, if it was a Big Bang, who pulled the trigger? <laughs> By faith! We understand God's word. And the Bible says in the beginning, God is saying, man, in the beginning, I, in the beginning, God created. Not man. I shared this, uh, I shared this just the other night. Man is finite. God is infinite. And so to the world, that seems foolish, but to the child of God, it's the power of God. Finally, the Bible says in 1 Peter chapter 4, 1 through 4, Therefore, since Christ suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourselves also with the same mind. For he who has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin. That, watch this. He no longer should, listen, it's talking about us, live. How do we live based on the faith? The rest of his time in the flesh for the lust of men. That's how the world lives. That's how they function. That's how they operate. That's how they meander down here. They live in the flesh. And the Bible says the rest of their time. But we for the will of God. We've spent enough of our past lifetime in doing, watch this, the will of the Gentiles. When we walked in lewdness, lust, drunkenness, revelries, drinking parties, and uh, abominable idolatries. In regard to these, look what the text says. Verse number four. They think. Look here. They live. They walk. They think. They think. They think differently than the way we think. And it says they think it strange, foolish, moronic, that you do not run with them in the same flood. Y'all see that? I don't know if it's, they think it's strange. Why? They think it's foolishness. But we know the power of God. Okay. Uh, and then Hebrews 5, 13, 14. It says, uh, 
Everyone who partakes in the, uh, only in milk is a skip of the word righteous, but he's a babe. Watch this, 14. But solid meat or food belongs to those who are, watch this, full of age. Full age, that is, those who by reason of use have their senses. I told you, we stopped talking about the five senses there. They have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. A child of God, five senses, but he got the sixth sense. And the sixth sense causes him to, or causes her to be able to discern between good and evil. That's how you know what's right and wrong. That's how you know because you are spiritually able to discern. How, how do you have, where does that sense come from? It comes from the word of God. And so when you read the word of God, David said, thy word have I what? Hid in my heart that I might not what? Sing. That's why it's all right to have a Bible. It's all right to have a book. It's okay to have this. It's all right. But, but I, I, may, I, may I challenge you may I challenge you tonight to memorize and have the word of God in your heart. Because sometimes you ain't going to always be able to flip the page. You're not going to always be going to do you, you need to know the word of God. And when you know the word of God and you see something that, that you know is not right, God's word and the Holy Spirit will, will help you to discern. Amen. Amen. There are certain people, the Holy Spirit will help you to discern. You don't need to, you don't need to be with them. No, 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 no. Y'all looking at me all strange. Amen. The Holy Spirit, y'all don't believe in the Holy Spirit? Y'all don't believe in the Holy Spirit? Y'all don't believe? Y'all don't believe in him? When he, the spirit of truth is, y'all don't know about the Holy Spirit? Well, what does he do? He operates within us to help us to discern. And that's the reason why, and I tell you something else, you know what, uh, not on the, Holy, the Holy Spirit, you, you can take a baby, you can take a little baby, you can take a little baby, you can take a little baby. And certain babies know, they, they, they know you mean, mad, and evil, they, they don't want to be with you, they, they'll get away from you. Y'all ain't seen the baby do that? They know you got a messed up mentality. <laughs> Discernment. And you can discern certain things. You can tell by people's spirit. You know when folk don't like you. Hello? You know when someone loves you. Your spirit. And God gives you his Holy Spirit to help you to discern, to know, to rationalize. I don't need to go there. I don't need to hang with them. I don't need to, I don't need to hang out with the world. I need to be with God's people. And that's the reason why if the Holy Spirit is operative in you, and when you grieve the Holy Spirit, you don't feel good. Because you know that you have a different sense. And that's faith. So when the world thinks your faith is foolish, it's because you have a sixth sense. And that's faith. And because I've got that sixth sense, I can do some things other folk can't do. I may not understand it, I'm doing it. You remember the Bible talks about our dear brother Peter? Jesus was in the boat, or the, the, uh, the disciples were in a boat. And uh, they were crossing over. One day they saw Jesus. They thought it was a ghost. And uh, Jesus was coming walking on the water. Y'all remember that story? And uh, Peter looked around. And brother Pete looked at that and said, Jesus, is that you? Lord, if that's you. Now, Peter's in the boat with all the other apostles, right? Lord, if that's you, bid me to come to you. Now, I'm sure that don't make good sense. Some of y'all said, Peter, I, I, can you imagine what the folk in the boat were saying? Peter, you're in the boat. I know you're a fisherman, but that don't mean you can do what Jesus did. He's in the boat with other apostles. And he sees Jesus walking. Lord, if that's you, bid me to come to you. Can you imagine what the folk in the boat were saying? Peter, have you lost your everlasting mind? 
I mean, Peter, I know you're a fisherman. You may be a good fisherman. But what makes you think you can walk on water? But Peter asked the question. And based on Jesus' word, what did Jesus say to him? Come. And Peter stepped out of that boat and began to walk on the water. Y'all ain't read that? I chance you to read it. Yeah, but Brother Johnson, he, he started to sing. Yeah, he did, he did. He took his eyes off of Jesus and he started to sing. But Brother Tickney, he, he walked long enough for his obituary to read. Here is the man who walked on water. Amen. I want to leave you tonight to tell you that's what you can do. Not physically. You can do those things with be, be not as though they were because of God. Because you have faith that the world don't understand. And if Jesus says, come, you and I need to come. Amen. Amen. That's my message tonight. Brother Tigner, what am I supposed to do next? Have a word of prayer. All right. Okay. A any questions? Did I scare you out tonight? <laughs> Brother Johnson, I'm going to walk on uh, Screw it. I'm going to walk on water. You got a sixth sense and it's called faith. Let us pray. Father, we bow our heads to thank you. We thank you, Father, for sending the greatest gift man could ever know, and that is the person of Jesus Christ. Because of what he did and our faith in him, we're here tonight, we're believing tonight, we're trusting tonight, and even though sometimes we don't always understand everything you're doing, even though we cannot even trace every bit of your handiwork, we still trust you because we know that you're in control. Tonight, as we've looked at these passages, may we go back home and reread them. And may it strengthen our conviction, our belief, and our faith in you. Not Buddha, not, not in anything else but you. Because we know that because of you, we can do all things that fail. Tonight we are thankful for all who have come and we pray that we will forever love you, that we will forever lean upon you. And may we have the faith to know that one of these days when we have to close our eyes, time should be no more. One of these days we're going to go home with you. This is our prime in the name of Jesus we pray.